What's up everybody, FSC Trucking. Well, it's back to reality. We are at the uh, Thornton's truck stop where we uh, left yesterday with Trent filming the Green Goblin truck. Today is Monday, the first Monday after the Louisville Truck Show, Mid-America Trucking Show. So now we're gonna fire up Orwell and get started on this week because while well, we got a skid steer to pick up, go back to Wisconsin, we're gonna talk about that. And uh, well, I got crap I gotta get done at home. I gotta get my trailer put back together and get back on it. So with that, let's fire this puppy up and get started. Alrighty, boys and girls, let's get at it, huh? So I'm at the Thornton's where we stopped when we filmed the Green Goblin truck. So I always check that. This, by the way, is a trailer brake. It works the trailer brakes only. Step on the brake, all the brakes come on. Pull this down, only the trailer brakes come on. Um, what that's for is if you got to slide tandems, spring brakes don't hold as solid as your service brake does. Also, if you ever get in a slide where your trailer is pushing the tractor trying to jackknife it, you might be able to tug it straight with your trailer only. That also requires you to let off your foot brake. So we're at least the truck's parking brake. I already put the air to the trailer. Lights on. Now let's get on down the line. Today's game plan is real simple. I came down here with a rental step deck off of Whitmire Express just so I can get down here under a load for the truck show, which to me was an absolute great success. Made a lot of new friends, met a lot of new people, hung out with a bunch of friends I've had for a while. And I think it worked out pretty good. So ultimately that was the whole goal. So I got down here. Now we're picking up literally one skid steer and it's a local delivery in Wisconsin. So I've yet to be able to confirm whether to have ramps to unload it in Wisconsin. But worst case, I can always bring it over to the yard and cross dock it onto another trailer, like a beaver tail or something. Uh, that's a step deck with a set of ramps on the back. You can just flip over and drive up and down on the back of it. We do have those, and uh, if it's not out, and of course could transfer it over to an RGN. There's ways to get it done, there's no doubt about that. I'm not too worried about it. It's pouring rain outside, as you can see, so I didn't see the sense of putting the camera outside. I figure I would try a new angle I haven't tried in a while. That's the one facing me. Hi. So I think I managed to get some good content out of the trucking show. I probably could have done more, maybe, but didn't want to be too pushy with certain things, so I just kind of let some things go. Pick up the skid steer, take it to, I think, Hilbert, Wisconsin. Pretty sure that's the name of it. No. Trucking show. Yeah, man, what a deal. Wow, that was something. You know, I'm starting to finally break out of what I've been calling my comfort zone and doing different things. I'm really not all that sure about putting Orwell in on the channel. Like, uh, put him out there and put him on the show circuit or show him off at trucks, you know, truck shows and so on. But probably wouldn't be a bad idea to set up like Gentry did and 
he had his own booth inside the West Wing, and that worked out really well because he had the white and blue cab over that International. He had that inside the show, and at one point he was mobbed. Like uh, he couldn't get through the aisle because there were that many people wanting to see him and see his truck. So we're hoping maybe for Max next year there might be a little change of thought when it comes to uh, YouTubers bringing trucks in and where to put them and where to put us. Now I had done a meet and greet with Green APU on Thursday, first day of the show, and uh, I had a bunch of people come out, come over, shake my hand. I thought that was real cool. Now, I met a lot of people just out walking around, just wanted to shake my hand, say hi, and I tried to spend time with each and every one of them. I try really hard to do that because for well, the few guys watching, I wouldn't be able to do the stuff that I do. This channel has grown a lot and I've been able to do a lot of really cool things with it. So that makes me happy. It really does. So I ran into a couple people that I never met before. Um, let's see here. I didn't get a chance to spend any time, but I was able, at least able to say hi to Miss Flatbed Red. I seen her real quick. Did someone told me to meet you. you someone yeah. told me that you'd be here too. Okay. All right. So yeah, we get people that watch apparently the same stuff. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, some of you guys had said that she was going to be over there, so I happen to see her. She's kind of hard to not recognize, so I was like, all right, put your hand, say hi. They're on her way to go get some food. They're hanging out over the uh, American Truck Historical Society. So they had a bunch of cool trucks over there. I wonder if I should look into that and uh, join up with them or something. Try to put some content together, we'll see. Something to seriously think about, I ought to look into that. That's a route I ought to look into. But one of the guys over there knew me pretty well, fans of the channel, so hey, there might be opportunity there for us to try to figure out and get together and make something happen there. And uh, finally got to meet Bruce Wilson. Of course, I'd known who Bruce Wilson was. Before I had this channel and uh, got to shake his hand, hang out a little bit on and off camera. Helped him out getting the uh, pulling truck out of the. That was a nightmare in itself. Obviously, he had his blue truck, his chatter taxi outside with the show trucks. And uh, the pulling truck was in the Renegade booth, and that was in the West Wing near Gentry's. Was. And, man, that was tight getting that truck out of there. So, if you see that video, check that out. So they will hang out with him a little bit. I'm standing here in front of this gorgeous piece of machinery. And man, just look at it. That's this great. is the world famous. Let me get you get your eyes on it. This is the world famous Orwell. Hang out with James Pretty. He came up with his wife, Jessica. And of course, Dominique, the dump truck driver, she gave me a shirt. Sporting that one proud. So uh, she hung out too. Did a bunch of videos, you know, kind of walking around together a little bit. I think her, me, and Bobby kind of hung out a little more off camera and on camera, but still, it was a great time. It's good meeting good people. So you guys ought to check all them channels out. And of course, here we are back in the grind. So I know Dominique and Bobby flew back. Um, I imagine Bruce went back to Florida. I know Timmy, he hauled ass yesterday. He went down the he went down to SH2. Oh, I forgot about them. Hung out with SH2. Sorry, Robert. Didn't mean to skip out on you. Hung out with Robert a little bit. Saw Bubba with his big old Just the Phase Red Kenworth. He does a uh, heavy haul with that big large unit. Got an interview with Caterpillar. Talked to him about brand new truck engines, reman truck engines. We might be needing their services in the future. And then, uh, did the interview with Steve Summers overnight drive. That was cool. Really enjoyed that. But listening to him and talking in on calling in on that radio show for literally 20 years. Never met the man until today. Or yes, well, um, two days ago. Today's Monday. I, I forgot. 
yeah, they all blend. All these things blend after a while. It's funny how it works. And then, of course, what I hope, the video I hope did massive numbers, was uh, the Green Goblin replica truck. There's a guy in Oklahoma, a truck driver, and a fabricator. He built that truck as an exact replica, as close as he could to the movie Maximum Overdrive. He even managed to find a trailer that was the same year-ish make and model and made it look exactly like the one in the movie. So he had a whole rig matched complete with the 318 Detroit. Well, actually, it wouldn't be a 318, would it now be? Because that engine was a... It's actually an EV71T, so it's a turbocharged... Three, uh, keep calling it 318, my bad. 318 was a naturally aspirated one. Yes, it's got a blower, but it has to have a blower. All it does is it uses it to scavenge exhaust. So it's a hard name to explain. There's videos on that. But yeah, so it's an EV71T. The 318 was just an EV71. So that one was turbocharged. Um, he told me it's probably, he has uh, larger injectors in it. And I don't know how big of the uh, turbo it is on it. So, by the way, it's got an awesome sound. It really closely matches the sound from the movie. So, it was definitely a very cinematic truck. It was awesome to drive. The transmission is a little, uh, it takes a little getting used to. Um, it kind of, honestly, Orwell is probably just as loose. But I got a lot more linkages to it. But it's a 15 speed. So, you start off here, like they call first second, third, fourth, fifth, lift it up, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, ten, and it has deep production, which adds the other speeds to it, and uh, it's easy to throw the deep production in by accident, so I know Trent said he put on his TikTok him driving and he was having a hard time with it, he caught a lot of crap, so I can't imagine the crap I'm going to catch I haven't edited that video yet at the time of filming this, so we'll see. We'll see how uh, brutal I am to myself. But yeah, Nate is the guy that built this truck. I can't remember his last name, but he posts a lot on the Facebook uh, page, the Green Goblin, the Green Goblin Replica Truck. So Nate's the builder, and this guy Trent bought it, and he lives out in Pennsylvania. So he brought the truck out there after leaving me. And I texted him this morning, he made it all the way out there to the Green Goblin, safe and sound, in his new home in Pennsylvania. Now I'm really looking forward to trying to make good content with that truck in the future. We'll see. The trouble with that unit is it's a little cost prohibitive to move around. Um, there's no reason to move these big rigs around, there's just no reason to move them around. But uh, we'll see what comes of it. So with all the people we've met, with all the contacts we've made, I think from here on, I think this channel, with your guys' help, is really going to go up a few stages in life, and I'm really looking forward to that. So probably, I've said it many times, but probably this month, I think I'm gonna potentially pull the trigger on getting another rig. I see a couple great ideas out there. But I need to wait a little longer. Plus I don't have my trailer fixed up yet. I'm still waiting on my S cams. So once they come in, Terry will bang it back together. And I'll have my trailer back. Hopefully be this week. I don't even know what this week holds other than being home tonight or tomorrow. Well, we'll see. Oh, geez, now I'm feeling terrible. So we met a new YouTuber, 18 Wheels Rolling. You need to check him out. He's a young guy, just starting out in the trucking and YouTube game, but he's aggressive. He's hungry. So go ahead and show him some love and support. Good dude. He's usually hanging out with his buddy, uh, Don McCord. Don McCord's got a YouTube channel. 
and he's running around in that purple K100. So you guys got to show them guys the love and support. And tell them I sent you. But they were good guys. They were good guys to hang out with on and off camera, for sure. Then of course, without saying Tim Gentry. Tim Gentry and me, we're, we've been real good friends since the start. Um, he's got a real awesome family. He's an awesome crew. Got to hang out with them. I stayed at their place a few nights. Just get out of the truck. And uh, had an absolute blast. Absolutely loved it. But yeah, we got, we got big plans. Well, not really. We don't have real big plans. We don't even know yet. We know we want to do something big. We just got to put our heads together and figure it all out. So... Oh, it's gonna be a great year. It's gonna be a great year. Oh yeah. Now I'm excited again. Look at that, I'm excited again. That's how good of a time I had. So, hell yeah. Well, alrighty, we are rapidly approaching our destination to pick up the single skid loader. In the process of getting here, I've had to endure not one but two traffic jams, a road closed due to blown over phone poles, and uh, construction. So it's, it's been, a, been a trip to say the least. That's all right, we're here. So, real silly. I also found out once I get rid of this, we're going to be loading up and heading east. Parts for my trailer still have not yet arrived. I'm about a week out, I'm told. Maybe mid the middle of this week. Today's Monday, by the way. So I'm looking at like Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, maybe even next week. That's fine. So I think it'll play out or I can load, turn and burn and get out east. Get a load and get back and maybe even be home by Saturday. That'd be nice. We'll see how it plays out as far as unloading this. But first, we have to load it. Oh, is this road? I'm digging that exit up there. It almost went right by it. That was a good break. Good brakes, too. It's like a real small New Highland tractor dealer. It's supposed to be. Yeah, right there. Alrighty, now I know how to get to it. They should have a ramp, I imagine. Most of these dealers do. They don't. Usually they have equipment big enough to lift it up on there. of cab overs right here not having the length length is nice for the comfort of the ride they say but it is not conducive to being nimble sometimes I like the nimbility 
Nimbility, that's a good word. I was talking on Steve Summer's show about made up words we're good at. My dad with my dad and my son Sean with gooify. Go back and talk to look at that video about gooify. Then there was another one, I can't remember what it was. Nimbility. Just start writing these down. List of made up FSC words that make perfect sense that should be in a dictionary. Nimbility. If we don't know the right word, we'll just make it up. Nimbility, boys and girls. We have arrived. Beautiful. Did it start easy? Oh yeah. That key to it. The box. Sweet. Alrighty, I'll get them tied down and be out of here. Alright. Thank you much. slide on that stuff. That's what's smelling. I still smell like rubber. Those are some rubberized gloves. See so, you look they list these grab handles as your tie down point. Another thing you could do is try to grab a hole like such but you can't. So we'll just use what they give. It works, it functions.
you know, I'm surprised Dominique don't make these shirts in uh, highlighter orange or uh, that yellow green or whatever, that highlighter color, hide this stuff. Might not be a bad idea, I should look into that. I know she watches the channel, she's a good friend of ours. Oh, I have my shirts available in a highlighter orange too at FSC. What is it? FSC, yeah, FSCTrucking.com. That's where my merch is at. That minute. Okay, good. They have the hooks here for tying down. I was like, oh no, don't tell me there's no tie down. There's always something to grab, just a matter of what. Somebody was asking me the other day about tying down loads. I mentioned like uh, the old times when they used to draw and quarter people. You stretch them out, we pull them together. We're stretching this one out. It's a game of angles. The back chains keep the unit from going forward. The front chains keep the unit from going back. And the angles create it. Well, it keeps it from side to side. Plus the downforce keeps the it, the freight tight on the trailer, so it doesn't want to go nowhere. It's a game of angles is all it is. Easy way to train a guy. Teach him that, teach him anything. The trick is when you got multiple pieces of freight on one truck, that's when it starts getting goofy sometimes. There's tricks to that too. Like so each link becomes half link because it's wrapped around that grab handle up there it's a half link now and I like my crap tight real tight Pretty good move today too. I'm still running. There you go. Still feeling real good about everything we've done at the truck show. Now I'm not so not so afraid of growth. We got some big plans coming here. I got ideas. I was thinking I was gonna drop this load and stay home for a little bit. I'm pretty ambitious right now. I got stuff coming up here in a few weeks that I need to be home for anyway. So, so yeah, I don't want to mess that up. Need a different type of binders. The handles are loose on these. The binders in here, that way when you pop them loose, I'll show you fast. See? I don't know if I can get these types anymore. I don't even know if they're made. But these are my favorites. 
So you grab the handles different. If you grab them like that, you bend the handle. That's how I already did that. There you are. And now you just bungee them to get, uh, get them so they don't rattle no more. And that's it, we're basically done. Throw some bungees and we're out of here. I kind of like these caterpillar gloves, I think about it. Grip added. For extra friction. Two over there. I kind of like these gloves. They got extra friction. The chain's wrapped around the handle. The bungee just keeps it from unraveling, keeps the handle from bouncing off. Should the decide to get bouncy with it, the skate steer bounce. But these are hard tires, so I don't think it's bouncy. A little extra support goes a long way. Oh, look at the stacks. The rain didn't really mess me up too much. Okay, that's good. I was worried about that. Just a little bit. That's it, we're done. All righty, there we are. One skid steer, one cab over, and one Steve. Right out of Bill Lading, get the logbook done and hit the road.